In this video, we're going to go over some of the basics of Microsoft Excel. Uh, this version that I'm using is Excel 2010, and uh, a lot of the newer versions look very similar, if not exactly similar, to this version. So you'll be able to follow along if you've got a newer version as well. So up on the top, we've got the File menu, Home, Insert, Page Layout, Formulas, Data, Review, and View. Um, most of these we'll be going over in later videos. For the most part, for the first couple of videos, we'll be staying in the, the home menu or the home ribbon and going over most of the features that are inside here. Uh, if you've never used Microsoft Excel, it's very similar to Microsoft Word as far as the formatting of, the formatting of text and the alignment goes. Uh, however, with Microsoft Excel, it is for grouping data and sorting data and keeping them keeping it organized and be able to automatically sum columns, get totals, um, do budgets, run reports, and anything anything related to that, either number crunching or sorting data. So in this video I'm going to go ahead and start showing you how to do a basic home budget. So what you're going to do, you've got in the layout here we've got the formula bar this is where you'll do all of your formulas, you'll edit your formulas. When you click on the different cells down here, if you've got a formula in there, it will show the equation up here. And I'll explain more of that later. We've got A, B, C, and D, and so on. And those are all called columns. And we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, down the right side, or excuse me, the left side. And those are the rows. Now this is it's actually kind of funny. It's almost like Battleship. You've got A1, B1, B5, and so the, these these numbers for the column and then the row number, those are used in all of your formulas and equations for your formulas. So if we go ahead and just start making your, your home budget, we call this the monthly budget, you can select multiple cells by clicking and dragging and holding it down. And we're going to go ahead and turn this top row of our spreadsheet into a merged cell. Now when you merge the cell, it groups them all together and takes off the little divider lines. So we're going to give this a, use this for the title. So we're going to call it our monthly budget. And then what you need to do is give your different columns some headers. You can't rename these. You can't rename A, B, C, and D. Those have to stay the way they are because they're needed by the system. But you can name the columns up here. So what you're going to do is start off by naming, we'll call it the bill name. And you can press enter and it will automatically jump to, it'll submit that and jump to the next line. If you press the arrow keys when you're editing a cell, it'll just jump around to the next, jump around to the next cell. So to be able to resize these, because you can see that bill name doesn't fit in there very well, you're going to want to put your mouse up over be, the, the columns between A and B, and you're going to click and drag and pull it over to the desired width that you want. I'm just going to drag that over about the width of three of those normal columns so we can have a little bit of room to put the bill name in there. So then we're going to, we've got the bill name, you've got the amount, so we'll go ahead and put amount in here. And this is just going to be a very, very basic budget. And we're going to put the due date just for, just for fun so we know when our bills are actually going to be due. Okay, so now if you wanted to format these a little bit to make them look pretty because they're pretty ugly right now, you can click on the cell you want or you can click and drag to select the cells that you want to, to uh, apply a format to. And we'll go ahead and start with the monthly budget. We're going to go ahead and make it bold. So we're going to click on the bold just, just like every other text editor you've ever used. And then you're going to choose a font if you want to change the font. We'll give it something cool. And then we're going to go ahead and increase the font size as well. Okay. 
And now we've got the title on there. So now we need to differentiate the column headers so it doesn't get lost in the uh, lost with the rest of them. So we're going to make them bold and we'll go ahead and just underline them. So now we've got bold and underline for those. So let's go ahead and put in our power bill. And you can press the over arrow key if you'd like and it'll submit that. And then type in your bill amount. So we'll say $241.39. Now when you press enter on that and submit it, you'll notice that the the number format is just a standard decimal number format. It doesn't have the dollar sign on there. It doesn't give it a currency format. So what you're going to want to do is now use this number section up here on the on the home ribbon and you're going to choose whichever one you want. So if we want the accounting number format, we would click on that. If we wanted percentage style, we wanted to have it be a comma style, we can click on that. If we want to show more or less decimal places, we can also show that. You can click on the little menu here and it gives you the option for currency or accounting. Now currency, you notice puts the dollar sign right next to the number amount. But if you were to click on accounting, it separates a little bit better so that your numbers are, are well separated from the dollar sign. So that you can easily see the numbers and you're not confusing the dollar sign with the number. So we'll go ahead and put, we're going to leave it at accounting. I'm going to go ahead and put a due date on here. We'll just go January. Okay, so we submit that, and some of these automatically format. I had typed it in in a different format, but it automatically sees that it's a date and recognizes it, and then changes the format. You can also change that as well, and we'll go over that later. So let's go ahead and do a couple more. So we've got our water bill. And we'll say that's $55. We'll say that's due on the 25th. Okay. And we'll get a few more entered in here. We got the mortgage. And that's $1,200. We're paying a little extra on that one, so we're just making a nice even amount so we can pay it off early. And you notice it dropped the, it dropped the uh, decimal place off there as well. Okay, so let's get one more on here. Let's go to car payment. That'll be, you got a really nice car, so we're gonna say it's $625, 14 cents. All right, so on here we're gonna add another date here for the due date on that one. So now, one of the other features you can use, so say if we've got this format that we have in on this cell, if you'd like to duplicate that exactly, the whole format, the bold, italicize, font settings, all of that, you can actually click on the Format Painter. So if you click on this cell, then click on Format Painter, and then you're going to come down here and you've got the little paintbrush on your cursor now, and you can click and drag to select the things, the cells that you would like to apply the same exact format to. And you release. After you've released that, it applies the accounting currency type, the format there. And if we wanted to, if we wanted to um, duplicate or, or continue on and repeat, you can actually. <clears throat> Put your mouse over, after you select a cell, you can put your mouse over the bottom right corner of the cell and it'll turn into a little crosshairs and you can click and drag. If you've only selected one cell, what it does is it just duplicates that same number and the same format all the way down. Now, if you wanted to have it continue on with a pattern, Excel also recognizes patterns. So if you had one, two, three, four, you have one through four dollars, 
You can select those by clicking and dragging, and then you can get your little crosshairs, and you can click and drag as well, and you'll see it goes $5, $6, 7 8 9 10 and so on. And it'll continue on. If you drag down, it'll continue, continue scrolling. And we don't want to do that right now, so we're going to go ahead and delete that. Now let's say you add a couple of other bills in there, and then now you would like to get a total monthly amount that you're actually needing to pay out for your bills. So we're going to click down here, call this total bills. The beautiful thing about Excel is that you can just put things wherever you want. As long as your formulas work, you can place them in your own custom areas here. So we're going to go ahead and align that to the right using the alignment tools up here. And then I'm going to go ahead and bold and underline that as well so it stands out. Now, one of the nice features of Excel is the auto sum feature. So what you can do is you can click on a cell directly underneath or next to a group of numbers that you would like to sum up and you'd like to add together to get the total. And then after you've clicked on your cell that you want to show the result in, you come up here to the auto sum button and it shows you, displays the sum of the selected cells directly after the selected cells. So you're going to click on that and it will automatically give you a little dancing ants selection showing you that it's selecting everything from here to here. And it gives you the little battleship numbers. So it's got B4 colon B11. So basically what this is saying is it equals and sum is the function and everything in between B4 and B11 are going to be summed using this sum function. So once you've got that set you can just press enter. It will automatically assume the accounting type for your number format as well and it will sum up all of those numbers. Now if you add in another bill let's say satellite TV so if you add another bill in here it's going to automatically total it for you. Just like that. Alright, so now that we've got our monthly budget together here, we've also got some other areas of Excel down here that I didn't explain to you. We've got sheets. Basically what sheets are, they're separate sheets of paper if you would like to think of them as that. And you want to try and group the same data or the same purpose of this data on the same sheet. So if we've got a monthly budget on this sheet and say we've got a shopping list on this other sheet, we wouldn't want to try and combine them both into the same. You could. You could put another title down here and put shopping list if you'd like to keep them all together. Or you can separate them so that they're organized and you can rename these as well by right clicking rename so this will be the monthly budget and then this one we're going to call it the shopping list I'll go ahead and just give that you can also copy and paste in between sheets. So if we wanted to keep the same format here, you can select all of those cells, copy them, then click on the top cell here where you want it to paste, and just paste it in. And you'll need to resize some of these. And we'll want to rename this to shopping list. And we'll want to First, take off the due date. That doesn't make sense. 
The total bills doesn't make sense either now, so we'll go ahead and delete that. And this bill name we can change to item name. Amount, we're going to go ahead and take off, remove the accounting type, and we're going to just change it to general. We're going to delete that now. And we'll call this the store name. So this will be the name of the store that you need to go to to get this item. And we'll go ahead and delete these as well. So now if you want to just have a basic shopping list with no formula, you can start making your shopping list. Then you go to Walmart for one, Costco for the other. All right, so now that we've explained the different sheets that you can have, you can always add more sheets, label them whatever you'd like, and we'll get into formulas that span multiple sheets in a later video as well. Um, but it's, it's pretty amazing. You can take the total bills from here or other numbers from here, and you can actually have it calculate the total of this onto another separate sheet or calculate some other numbers there. So um, our monthly budget's looking pretty good. What you're going to want to do though, uh, budget's not really any good without an income. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to right click on the row and click on insert and it'll insert a new row above the one you right clicked on. So if we wanted to go right click on number three, insert above that, and then we're going to go ahead and say net income, and we'll put your paycheck amount in there. We'll just say that you're making 3000 a month, doing pretty good this month. And of course we need to either set the number format up here or you can use the format painter that I showed you earlier okay so now let's have it subtract the net income from the total bills and see how much we have left over at the end of the month so we're going to say remaining remaining amount and we're going to go ahead and use the format painter copy the same format that we had for total bills and it automatically right aligns it underlines it and bolds it so now instead of just being able to use the auto sum for this new one we can't just click on it and tell it to auto sum so what we need to do is make our own custom formula here so you start formulas by using the equal sign basically that's saying that the formula that follows this is what this cell will equal and what it will show. So you're going to go equals and we click on the first one. It gives you the dancing ants. So this is the one that we're going to start with. And then we want to type in the subtraction symbol. So now it knows that that one was selected. It's the first one in our equation. You can see it up here in the formula bar. And you can also see it in the cell. And then we click on the one we want to subtract from. So B3 minus B14 will equal the value that's shown in this cell. So we're going to press enter when we're done. And that will submit the formula and automatically total it. So now you can't see the formula anymore. You can just see what the value is and the result of that formula. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share this video, and give us some comments below. Thank you.